Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Hope you guys all have a great week so far. Welcome back to a CSGO News Weekend Recap. So hope you guys all enjoyed the episode. Let's hop into the first news story today though. A big controversy about MoTV and other YouTubers out there. We're going to talk about revenue share versus owning a website. Of course, this sparking controversy because in the CSGO scene itself, there are more gambling sites than all other esports combined. Uh, this being the predominant one, we've seen some PUBG ones pop up every now and again. But of course, CSGO sites are the most well known for the gambling. And I do want to discuss, as of, right, as of lately, the problem we've had with disclosing owner of websites. Now, I do want to preface this by saying I do not think that MoTV is going to be using this to his own advantage. I don't think he's going to be cheating on these websites or abusing that power that he does have, but I do think that he actually has ownership in companies or websites that he says he's getting revenue share from. So to kind of spark off this controversy or spark off this story, to give you guys some background, we have MoTV tweet out this a few days ago about CSGO Magic, one of those websites who do give him revenue share or ownership, depending on how you guys look at it, and he tweet out about going from $500 to $12,000 on the website. He did not record it, but of course he tweeted out about it, and that's sparking some controversy because people saw himself as having ownership on that website. So if you guys don't see the conflict of interest, of course, if you do have ownership of a website, you might be more influenced to actually, you know, tweak your results or maybe give yourself a little house edge, and of course promote yourself winning more on the website. So to kind of give you guys a quick preliminary, uh, you know, example of that is him tweeting out about him going from $500 to $12,000, although it might not be, although it might be real, although it might be to our knowledge an actual thing the fact that he actually tweeted that out of course promotes the website and maybe in turn if with his revenue share gets him more money and maybe that's maybe it was falsified maybe it was a lie altogether there's really no way to fully prove that and I'm not saying he's lying to all of us but that's kind of where the conflict of interest does lie if you have ownership in a company or a gambling website you're gonna be more preempt to actually promote that in any way possible to give yourself more money back so of course this also goes back to other websites he has allegedly owned in the past a, a pure example of this was actually CSGO boss we had confirmed a long time time ago and, and way way back in my videos we saw the screenshot the former owner of CSGO boss his name was also Jake it was a leaked screenshot on his stream where he actually classified what Mo's role on the website was was an owner it was a 15% ownership but then we have Mo TV and his CSGO boss video calling it revenue share he, he tells his fans and his viewers and again I really have no, no big problems against this I just want to clarify for all of you guys that in my own eyes revenue share is pretty much ownership to give you guys an example of course for the remainder of the lifetime of CSGO magic he will get a percentage cut of all all their revenues for the remainder of that website's lifetime whatever they make he will get a percentage of that in other words he owns part of the website. It's partial ownership. Now, if you guys disagree with me, please leave a comment down below what you all think about this. It's like, let's say, for instance, put in other examples, other terms of, uh, for all of you watching. Let's say one of you starts a YouTube channel, and for the remainder of that life of your YouTube channel, whenever you make a video, I make a strict percentage of your profits. Every video for the rest of your life, I make a percentage of what you make. That means I partially own your YouTube channel. That's the that's kind of words I'm trying to put it out there for you guys. I really don't like when other YouTubers out there don't disclose this, although Mo's done a great job disclosing that he does make revenue share from it. I think he's almost trying to change the words to persuade people to think that he doesn't own gambling websites. In my own eyes, my own opinion as of right now, I think it's pretty strong backing. Revenue share is quite equivalent to owning part of the website, having partial ownership. What do you guys think? Does this bother you guys? Leave a comment down below. But moving on to our next story as well, we had some big things happen this past weekend with the Star Blast series. Many of you guys are aware that was a kind of a unique tournament with a lot of best of ones. And in fact, every single matchup in that tournament was actually based around being a best of one. They were playing matches all at one time. It was kind of weird to see uh, many of your favorite teams playing alongside each other at the same time. A lot of kind of viewers had a, a little bit of a conflict with that. You know, if, if your favorite team is Astralis and also SK and they're playing at the same exact time on two different streams and you can't really watch both full games. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Leave a comment down below what you guys think. But even in bigger news, we had Astralis actually win the entire event. They finished off in a best of one in the grand final against SK Gaming, beating them 16-3. to And the big news, of course, was they had no device. And in fact, device was on medical league leave and they actually had Dennis stand in for him. Yeah, I was replaying that clip and I called it Star Blast. And I was wondering why that didn't sound correct. It actually was the Blast Pro series, but the name of my pre-workout and the caffeine I take is actually, it's it's Star Blast Caffeine. So I do apologize, but that was a huge event with Astralis because of course they had Dennis. Dennis on leave from the God Sent roster, so picked up by Astralis just for the Blast Pro series. And they picked up other players for the, the rest of ECS matches as well. And he did very, very well for him. So this of course making device take to Twitter because many fans out there were talking about maybe Dennis replacing him or other members of Astralis and it was kind of sad to see other pro players backing him up and saying do not worry you're one of the best players and this tournament was in no way actually a defining moment for them because of course being best of ones it was very very um, kind of a very very swaying each, we, each and every way kind of series but it was a fun tournament to see but on top of that I do want to point out this is a great recruitment time for Dennis himself making himself look very good
good, of course, him very well known for his pistol rounds, but on top of that, it making himself look very good for other teams out there, like an Optic Gaming who is looking for members. We'll talk on that for our last story, but very briefly on top of that, I do want to talk about other players out there looking for teams, and that does include, of course, Steel. Now, the former I Buy Power member himself taking a long part alongside Days. Days has taken his break, and now Steel is looking at with, with some new teams out there with that tweet on screen for all of you. With any top eight Mountain Dew League teams or any teams in ESL Pro League next season who are looking for a new player, he actually is now looking and so we'll see how far he does take it dedication-wise, hopefully a bit farther than Days did in his past. So we'll move on to our next story, though, and our last story for today's episode of CSK News. I do want to quickly apologize why it's going to be our last story in a short episode for all of you. I did lose my voice these past few days. I actually got sick over break, but hopefully going to be healthy the next week or so and back to full-time videos. But now into our last story about Optic Gaming. And that wasn't short. The Optic Gaming are now all the way back in Europe. Of course, we had all their players posting their tweets, Hector and all of his blogs, and also the new Vision episode showing that their CSGO house is now done with, and all the players who are not a part of the CSGO team and move back down to Texas uh, into their new gaming house. But on top of that, very big news for, of course, Optic Gaming because also in their latest Vision episode, we had Hector go on a long rant already talking about potential changes for the Optic roster. Now, no one caught about this. No one really talked about this, but I thought it was very peculiar for a for an actual owner of that CSGO team and, of course, a big factor in determining who actually plays for all of their rosters to already talk about potential changes in the future because, of course, we haven't seen too much from Optic so far, uh, You know, despite ESL Pro League going decently for the team, uh, them being in the North American region, of course. But besides that, no huge successes for the team who's only been together for three to four months now. So it's very early for them to make any changes, especially with I talked about in the last episode, Hector being one of those owners who trust the process, you know, and one of those uh, owners who actually likes to have players as long as possible. He really does trust the process of the more time you spend with the team, the better you do get eventually. And so we got kind of a peculiar situation, though, to see him talk about potential changes maybe in the future for CSGO roster. He made sure to admit if they do come, they come and we'll find out what happens then. So here's that clip for all of you. I'm not I'm not worried about it because I am having the appropriate conversation with you with, with the team right I am having this open dialogue with them as to is there something that we could be doing better is there something that we need to be fixing is there someone that needs to that needs to be you know replaced what I don't want to do is is to continue to be a dead horse if this team isn't gonna work then we have to figure out what the right scenario is going to be when that happens and even then even when we make that decision right uh, even when we make the decision to, you know, replace someone or people in, in on the team, we have to make sure that this is going to be something that 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 benefits us, you know, long term. We can't. We 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 got to stop saying, all right, let's let's take this from here, that from that, that from there, and see if it works. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. If you guys did, please leave a like or a comment down below. I'll be replying to comments today and also moving back to my apartment for the next two weeks. I have two more weeks of heavy school, a lot of projects, a lot of tests going on, and of course, my finals and exam week coming up very soon. So it's going to be a very stressful week, so hopefully some CSK News videos coming out sometime soon, but I can't promise you guys anything. And then, of course, during Christmas break, we'll come back very heavy with videos. So hope you guys all enjoyed. Leave a comment down below. I will see you all next time. Remember, I like you. Well, <laughs> goodbye. Thank you.